Hi, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Our topic today is health disparities. Let me introduce my two guests. Ron Branch is a principal and a lead consultant in our Chicago office and has spent many years as a carrier relations specialist. And Samantha Fulton is also a principal in our Chicago office, and she is the strategy and development manager for our carrier relations team. We started doing a request for information around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm just thrilled that you're both here um, because health disparities is such a big topic for everyone, really. And so the challenge, I think, is just identifying the health disparities to begin with, and then secondly, how do you address them? So Samantha, help me understand um, just the background on the DEI survey. How did it come to be and what is the focus? Thanks, Tracy. Um, so Mercer was the first of its kind to even ask the carriers about their DEI journey. You know, we were excited to ask them, and honestly, they were excited to answer our RFI. Um, last year was the second year, and the carriers that weren't involved um, the first year were asking to be a part of it the second year. So, you know, one that's rare that people want to to do more more work as it relates to RFIs, but they were very excited to share um, about what they were doing and the things that they were planning. So we saw a really really high response rate. Um, last year, we really focused on three things. You know, we wanted to know what the carriers were doing um, at their own firms. You know, many of our clients want to partner with companies that share similar values. So we wanted to see if the carriers were walking the walk and talking the talk with their own employees. Um, second, we asked what they were doing in the communities they serve. You know, they were doing a lot, honestly, that we just didn't know about. So this RFI provided the space and opportunity for them to share and highlight the investments and involvements they've made at, at the local level. Uh, lastly, we wanted to know what they were doing to help Mercer um, clients. Um, last year, 24 medical carriers and 15 lab carriers responded. Um, that number represents about 89% of health and lab placements. So, you know, a really great, great response rate. Um, but this year, we are focused on really how can the carriers help Mercer clients. Um, we're going to ask some of the same questions that we asked last year to really kind of see growth and change over time. But um, we want to dig into what they're doing to help um, identify health disparities and what they're doing to help implement solution or what they're doing to help our clients implement those those uh, solutions. Okay, so um, if if an employer really wanted to dig in on health disparities, how important is it for them to provide um, race and ethnicity indicators on their eligibility file? And if they can do that, can the carriers even do anything with that data? One, it's extremely important. And uh, for the most part, the answer this answer to your second question is yes. Um, we asked that question on the RFI last year and 68% of carriers said yes. If a client provided demographic data, they would be able to produce health disparity reporting. So, um, you know, you and I know that 68 is not 100, so we still have uh, room to, to grow there. And it really starts with the ability for carriers to analyze that data and provide the reporting. Um, next, it comes down to engaging and partnering with community-based organizations. Um, that's essential to really making the impact at the individual level. Um, and lastly, it's increasing their use of Z codes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Z codes are codes physicians and care teams use to identify social, environmental, and economic factors that impact someone's health outcomes. So for example, Z codes, um, there are Z codes related to uh, people experiencing issues with housing or employment or transportation, of th things like that. Um, but these are codes on claims that can be used to, one, identify health disparities, um, two, signal a referral, and then three, track and monitor progress over time between that social service organization and the provider. Uh, we do see a lot of this on the Medicare side, but increasing the use outside of Medicare is extremely important. So, you know, I don't ever recall talking about Z codes um, with you know, employers or carriers. How widely used are they in the claims data? Unfortunately, we don't see a lot of them. Um, on average, it's about 2%. So, you know, definitely a, a huge opportunity there for um, the, the carriers to do more. So that's really interesting about the Z codes. I don't recall ever really having a conversation about Z codes um, in meetings where we're looking at data on what's going on with the health plan. So that's, that there's a call to action there for sure. So Ron, uh, Samantha talked about um, that we were kind of surprised to find out 
all of the things that the carriers are already doing. Can you just share a couple of examples? Yes, absolutely, Tracy. Carriers have been doing a lot of great work in helping clients identify when they may have health disparities within their own employee populations. Many carriers have been actively working on building out reporting capabilities to show these disparities, as well as developing programs to address health disparities. We've seen great examples of this from several carriers. We've also met with all the major carriers, teams that lead their organization's work on addressing health disparities and have been impressed with the work they're doing as well. Last year, one of the health plans identified four health disparities that they will focus on over the next four years. The first of these was maternal health, which they set as a goal to reduce health disparities in maternal health by 50% in the next five years. The other three that they plan to focus on are behavioral health, diabetes, and cardiovascular conditions. These are just a few of the examples of the great work being done by carriers. I personally believe it's important that our clients really begin, if they're not already doing so, to, to have meaningful discussions with carriers and consultants around health disparities and making their benefit programs as inclusive as possible. So those are some great examples. And you know, just knowing that this is something that the carriers are taking on is a good thing because surely we will all benefit from that. But you know, maybe we don't want to wait, like maybe um, plan sponsors want to roll up their sleeves and get involved too. And so, Samantha, let's talk about the call to action for plan sponsors, like specifically what should they be doing if they want to get involved and help um, guide the path for addressing health disparities in their plans population? Yeah, you know, it really starts with having employees self-identify. You know, we can't see and dissect the needs until that happens. So I would say that is the number one thing that the plan sponsors can, can do. Um, second, I would say really request and insist on that health disparity reporting from the carriers. You know, it's okay to ask for that and it's okay to honestly expect that from them. Um, they can also press for more diversity within the provider networks. Um, this includes adding demographic data to the provider directory. Um, we're seeing a lot of carriers add pictures, which is very helpful. You know, as a member, you want to connect with someone you feel that you can relate to. So having that demographic information is very important. Um, increasing the use of Z codes. You know, we talked about that before. That's also extremely important. They can press the, the carriers for, for that as well. And lastly, I would say um, after the analysis comes in, really just partner with the carriers to implement those solutions. You know, solving this is a win for the employee. It's a win for the employer. It's a win for the carrier. It's a win for everyone. So um, definitely some things that they can do to, to, um, to, to start that. What is the ROI for employers who roll their sleeves up and work on this and get it right? Significant. Tracy, the ROI is significant for employers that truly begin to look at health disparities. The main investment on their part really is upfront, as Samantha indicated. Identifying the race and ethnicity of their employees, and once disparities are identified, taking action. This is well worth the effort. Generally speaking, employers can have a huge impact on the quality of life of their employees by ensuring that all employees are receiving optimal care. This will lead to better health outcomes for their employees, which increases presenteeism and improves productivity. This can also have a huge impact on the company's bottom line. There's also another significant financial component as well. Eliminating health disparities should also help lower costs for employers and employees. Lastly, as employees are more focused on environmental, social, and governance goals, eliminating health disparities should play a key role in the social aspect of their ESG strategy. Wow, you know, you had me at savings, but when you added in the ESG, this is just really a home run for employers if they choose to take this on and if they get it right. So Ron and Samantha, thank you both so much for being here today. Such a great topic. And I would love to have you back next year um, when we have more results from the DEI um, survey to see how much progress we made um, since we first started doing this. So thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Tracy.